Um, actually, next up is going to be Manal Mishra from Netflix, and he's going to talk about when bad things happen to good applications. Great. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I hope you can hear me all right. Um, I'm Manal, and I manage a few of the key platforms in Netflix. Um, to start off, uh, did, anybody, did everybody know that yesterday was Earth Day? So happy Earth Day to everyone. I'm going to use uh, Earth science to kind of introduce my topic. Uh, so let's start with what, what makes Earth a successful life system. Um, one of the most widely accepted theory is of plate tectonics. Plate tectonics for the uninitiated is basically uh, large-scale movements in the Earth's lithosphere. Um, it is not limited to just the formation of mountain ranges and ocean trenches, but it also postulates that it is very essential for life to succeed on Earth. Um, some of the tasks that are accomplished by tectonics are uh, replenishment of depleted nutrients, generation of magnetic field, which prevent the solar, violent solar wind from affecting Earth, uh, and stabilizing the temperature of the planet by recycling carbon dioxide. So what is the similarity between uh, a successful life system and a successful software application? Um, a successful software application needs to uh, adapt and constantly innovate depending on market demand. This means that there is constant change in every layer of the stack. And haven't we all seen that? Uh, with the success of the, the mobile platforms, we know that uh, these platforms need to constantly and uh, rapidly innovate. Uh, but with uh, every coin has a flip side. Uh, so does this churn. In the case of uh, life-supporting plate tectonics, we have seen catastrophic side effects like volcanoes, landslide, earthquakes. And um, while we have come to accept these side effects, we have also made tremendous progress in the technologies that are used to determine and track these events with high, de uh, with high uh, grade of accuracy. Thankfully, we in the software industry don't have to deal with anything of that magnitude. Uh, but uh, software development, the dynamics, go hand in hand with uh, its own side effects that we refer to as bugs. And we have gone and developed a lot of systems that you know, help catch these bugs sooner than later. Uh, I'm going to talk about one such system uh, that at Netflix has helped us uh, catch these bugs, which is our endurance system. And I will basically also explain, uh, uh, you know, discuss some case studies which will help me illustrate how bad things that are out of your control can affect a good application. So let's start with uh, what is the motivation behind endurance tests for uh, a consumer application? The user expectation, right? Uh, we all, as users, have began to use uh, mobile applications rather than website because of the magical experience offered by it with greater performance. Uh, the performance of application, again, varies from platform to platform and also on the application architecture. We also face unpredictable user behavior where a user behavior might might invoke code path that might affect the performance of the application. And finally, for a media application like Netflix, where users spend at least 30 minutes, right? We don't have TV shows which are shorter than that. Uh, uh, a simple memory leak can lead to suboptimal experience for our consumers. So like every other automation team, we went ahead and you know built a functional automation uh, system. Uh, the architecture that you see here is very similar to uh, a lot of the client uh, 
automation architecture that are available today. Uh, however, we built a custom in-house solution, solution uh, uh, basically, uh, which could scale to multiple different uh, platforms that our application is available on, and also build reusable parts. So certain uh, platforms use certain parts, but overall, this is the architecture of one such platform uh, using those reusable parts. <clears throat> and of course, uh, you know, with the continuous integration mantra, we put our functional test behind the uh, continuous integration system on Jenkins. Um, the thing uh, with, the, with the custom solution was that it was modular enough that we could basically develop endurance tests on top of the system with minimal effort. And then with the power of Google Spreadsheet, we were able to build a reliable uh, endurance reporting system. Um, obviously, you know, we are a client automation team. We don't uh, want to deal too much with databases, server, and the cloud. So why not use Google Spreadsheet? Um, so what do we measure? We basically split our uh, performance counters into three parts. Uh, platform specific, which is memory utilization of the, uh, the platform itself, uh, CPU utilization uh, metrics that is provided by platform. The second being video playback statistics, where we measure uh, things like you know, the playing video bitrate and audio bitrate, uh, which is again dependent on network conditions and uh, the hardware itself that you're uh, playing back on. The frames rendered dropped, uh, the buffer size, which is important, and rebuffer counts, which is really important from consumer perspective since it determines the quality of experience. Um, the third, third piece is, of course, the application metrics, where we measure startup times for the application. In order to give a good consumer experience, you need to have faster startup times. And we also measure uh, cer uh, certain transition times between pages as the users navigate through them. So CI for endurance. Uh, you can see the image right uh, there, which is uh, pulled from the performance uh, metrics that you normally receive from a car. Uh, like a lot of people in the Bay Area where I live, I also drive a hybrid car. And what I've realized is the continuous feedback on, the, on my driving performance has helped me become a better driver. Um, so we, we took this idea and we put it for our application uh, to measure, to continuously measure the performance of our application. Uh, this also ensured that performance is treated as a feature and not as an afterthought. And for, for the test team's benefit, we, we could ensure that our endurance tests are current. But uh, you know what they say about old habits, they die hard. I realized that when I came back from a long vacation and I, began driving my car, I easily slipped back into the old bad habits. And uh, I felt that having uh, looked at my performance trend over a period of time, I could easily correlate uh, the mistakes that I was making uh, with, with the trends and be easily able to remember them. So we, took, um, so we decided to build trend charts on top of our continuous integration uh, for the endurance test where we use simple statistical functions uh, to kind of track uh, progression over build uh, for the different performance counters. And we looked out for the statistical outliers. Using this system, we were able to find several uh, bugs that were introduced by our developers. But uh, to justify the title of this talk, I'm going to talk about two such case studies where uh, we found issues using this system that were not introduced by our developers. The first one, um, last year Netflix realized that the API service that delivers data to hundreds of different devices needed to be re-architected. The main reason behind that was, um, the main reason behind that was the fact that uh, one size fits all model could not work with uh, you know, low power devices. So what uh, the, the direction that we moved to was uh, 
giving the control uh, to the devices to be able to tweak the response so that you get just enough response data to, uh, to render a rich UI for your platform. Um, as I mentioned before, we were tracking our, uh, we were tracking the, the startup times on our platform over different builds. And this chart over here basically shows you the different uh, uh, startup times to the different experience that you might launch into, into. One is the regular experience, and the other is the, the kids' experience. Um, what we realized is after a point, the, uh, once we switched to the new version of the API, the, uh, the startup time to the, uh, the kids' browse screen increased by about 25%. And we were able to look at this build and immediately notify our partner team. And over a period of time, we were able to fix it before it actually affected our end consumers. Um, the next example is even more scary because we, uh, we got notified of this issue three days before our release. Uh, this was a release that we were scheduled in December when we were releasing a ton of promotional features for our new original series, House of Cards. It's a great show if you haven't seen it. Uh, so um, the other thing that we also do is, you know, uh, like I showed in the, the application stack itself, uh, like we are dealing with bleeding edge services, we also deal with the bleeding edge ADK from our partners. So. Um, like a good, uh, uh, good consumer of uh, the, the pl platform ADK, we were the first one to take the ADK version. Uh, the top graph basically shows you the application memory uh, that, that is provided by the counters in our application. And it kind of remained consistent over the last six months. You can see it's kind of remained flat in terms of how much memory it's utilizing. The bottom chart shows you the uh, available native memory which is the memory provided, uh, which is the counter provided by the system, which tells us how much memory is remaining. And you can see, as we switched to the new version of the ADK, you can see the, the mountain ranges out there, uh, where there were times when memory hit rock bottom, and there were times when it remained constant. But while testing this, we found a functional bug which was more worrisome, where the playback would crash um, every time you uh, every time you change the audio stream, which is uh, you know a big deal for our customers, and we realized we were able to track this bug back to the ADK, so we reverted back to the previous version of the ADK, notified our partner, and went ahead with our business. Uh, three days before the release, the partner comes back to us and tells us that uh, the uh, the bug has been fixed, and you know you can go and adopt it. So we said, OK, we'll test it out. Everything worked fine. Functionally, the, you know, the application looked really good. But what you see out here is that the native memory consistently hit rock bottom. So these are tests. Uh, endurance tests are tests which run for two hours over our platform. And most of our functional tests gets done within 30 minutes. So the memory leak over here manifests itself after one hour of video playback. And as a Netflix com consumer, you know, there are no movies which are less than one hour long, right? So uh, we were able to track this down to an ADK bug. Again, we reverted back and uh, shipped the version in time. Um, the main, the key takeaway th that uh, we have over here is basically any type, any form of test that you're developing, whether it be functional integration or performance test, make sure you're consistently running it and analyze the result uh, that that you get out of these tests. With these thoughts, I would like to end the talk with a quote from Robert Allen, which has a bigger meaning in life, but I think it's still appropriate for the test community. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Vinal. Yeah, that's an old adage. If nothing's running, it doesn't use any memory. So that's a good learning. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I think we have time for uh, one question. Um, I don't see any live questions just yet. We'll wait for the Dory. Uh, if there's a good Dory question, I'll pick it. Um, otherwise, we're going to go into a break right after this um, until 345.
And then we have two very interesting talks, one from uh, academia and one uh, talk that has influenced many of the others here. Um, so let me see if, let me see this Dory question or uh, this moderator question here. It says, do you include any testing parts into your product delivered to end users? What statistics do you get from the apps on end users, end users devices and how do you deal with it uh, with that huge, I suppose, amount of it. And if the lawyers are not here, it's okay if you don't answer that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, basically we do a lot of uh, end user testing. We do instrument our uh, client applications with a lot of uh, information that gets logged into our service. We have a you know huge uh, cloud-based system which basically collects all this data and we, we basically process this data in a distributed uh, cloud platform uh, to kind of you know get an analysis of what our users are face, you know going through because it's very hard for you to test all the all the cases and the best way to test it is by testing it in production. Great, um, and with that, thank you. We'll be back in seat at three forty-five. Um, so I will see you then. Thank you.